Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I wanna see if the MacBook Air overheating is overblown. Now, you guys probably saw my previous videos, all the excitement I had with these new MacBook Airs, the quad-core processor for just $100 more, which led into me kind of not recommending that anymore because of the laptop getting too hot, constantly running at 100 degrees Celsius, even when you're not pushing it that far, and the worst thing of all, not just the high temps, but the noise that comes with it. Now, I recently watched watched a video by the one and only, and he did a comparison between the old gen MacBook Air, the i3 model that I now recommend, and the i5 model that I personally purchased. And his results kind of showed that it didn't get that hot, um, not like some of my tests. So I, in this video, I just want to clarify some of my findings and why some of his were different, and then give you guys my final opinion and see how kind of we differ with him and also um, how some of our findings still match up and are valid. So let's go ahead and get started here. As you guys can see, this MacBook Air is running at 37 degrees Celsius. The fan is off. This thing was sitting here overnight. And let's go ahead and do a few tests. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Safari. And a lot of his tests, he ran Safari. So let's go ahead and open up YouTube. And I just wanna explain why we're getting some differences. So right there, we open it up, hit 60 degrees Celsius, not an issue. And then let's go ahead and open up, say, a YouTube video. Let me go ahead and maybe scroll down over here. Stuff is loading up. Everything looks fairly good. We're watching a great MKBHD video, 1080p, 30 FPS, no problems. Our temps are lining up. We're getting closer to 60 right here. And let's go ahead and open up, let's say, a 4K30 video, which he also showed off. And there, we shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Now let's see what our temps do here. We're running at 57, 55. This is running great. Let's go ahead and open up just a few more tabs, just like he did. Now we're running at 79. Let's flip over here, 74. This is normal use. And as I said in my video, uh, I would highly, highly recommend running Safari. It is much more efficient and our temps are lower. Now with Safari, it runs great. And with 30 FPS videos, it also runs pretty good. Let's go ahead and open up a 1080p 60 video over here. And now we're at 81 degrees Celsius. The fans are running at 2700, 79. Just like you showed off, I have a couple tabs open. This is still normal use and it's working just fine. Now, one thing in my videos, I'm gonna go ahead and quit that and open up Chrome. I started off with Chrome and I was also playing back just 60 FPS, not 30. So let's go ahead and hit YouTube. And I'll show you guys just how some of these apps that a lot of people use are much less efficient. We just hit 97 degrees Celsius there. I'm gonna open up this top video here. Now we're 96 Celsius again, 94. And this is 1440p. Let's go ahead and go up to 4K60. Now I personally love playing back 4K videos. The detail is really good, even if you don't have a 1080p display. And here, just like I showed off to you guys before, if you guys can see, we're running at 100 degrees Celsius, 3100 RPM. Now, um, this might not be the normal use case that most people would use it, but uh, this is valid results for the system. And my biggest complaint wasn't that, you know, in some cases it runs hot. My complaint was that Apple could have done a much better job. You guys know that we are fans of MacBooks or fans of Apple, but when they do something wrong, I don't wanna just excuse it and say, hey, that's okay. Most people that buy this system, you know, they're not gonna push it that hard. I want them to do better, especially when if it's, if it's something that is so simple. So here we're still running at 100 degrees Celsius, 3,800 RPMs. We're getting some stuttering here, and the stuttering is because the system is actually slowing down and throttling. My recommendation was for people to buy the i3 processor and the one and only, he did a great job in his video. I'll link it down in the video description. He said that, hey, that processor, the i5, still gets about 20, 25% more performance when we benchmark it. And because of that, it's still worth getting it. You wanna future-proof your MacBook Air. My opinion is if you're getting more performance to future-proof it, and in the future when you need the extra performance, you're result is going to be a system running super hot and then after a bit it's going to heat up and it's going to run loud what's the point of future proofing it that way it's just going to get annoying later and let me show you guys another example here 
Um, Epic Games, this is one of my biggest issues where this whole thing jumped out at me. So we just started updating Fortnite right here. The download speed is very slow. It's not unpacking the data that quickly, as quickly as it could, and that does make the system heat up more just because our internet is slower here at the office. Um, but we see our fans are running at 4,400, and after about a minute here, it's gonna ramp up to 8,000. So here you go, after just a bit, we're already at over 6,000 RPM, 6,250. It's gonna keep ramping up, and the problem is, this is not normal. I mean, it's not only Epic Games. I've run other fairly basic tests, not 4K raw video editing, stuff like that, and it gets heat soaked, the system does, and then just runs loud and hot. And then that four core slows down and it runs slower than other Macs that have less power. And that's my biggest complaint. And when we go to max fans, I'll just click, it'll max out maybe about after 30 seconds, but I'll click it. It can't heat down the system because that fan is not connected to the heat sink, uh, to the actual CPU, it, it doesn't effectively cool it down. So it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter and then sits there. Now, uh, the fix, there's a couple of ways to fix it. I made a separate video, you guys can check it out after this one. Basically, it's not allowing the CPU to have to heat up and then throttle, it's just slowing it down ahead of time. In your actual results, in your, you know, how fast stuff happens and how smooth the system is, it actually runs smoother than allowing it to heat up all the way and then be limited. So here, we're maxing out the fan, it's not gonna get any uh, cooler at all. I'm gonna go back to system, it's gonna go to C7000 right now. And this is my complaint. I have to get Apple about this. I can't just say, hey, you know, people are gonna buy the system, they're not gonna push it that hard. It's just, it's not good for them to have a loud system when this could have been avoided very easily. And same thing if you're just running Chrome, if you're running some Word documents, Excel sheets, even basic stuff once the system heats up. Now, in his video, he played back 1080p 30, he played back 4 k 30 he added different tabs um, on top of each other. And in the background, macOS does a great job, so it's not taking up a lot of resources. And same thing with Apple TV, when you play that back, Apple TV will give you a 1080p uh, 30 frames per second video signal. It's very efficient. Apple does a great job with their own programs. Uh, but my complaint is that people are gonna have a louder system than they should, a hotter system than they could have had, and the performance is much less than it could have been with a simple heat pipe. So my kind of conclusion is, does the system have a heat issue, especially the i5? Yes, it does. Um, I think the i3, just like the one and only found, it may be about five to 10, even 15 degrees uh, cooler in some instances. And after you're using it for a half hour and an hour, when the system is heat soaked, even after doing basic tasks, that heat just adds on. I would just suggest, just go for the i3, and have less heat issues and less fan noise issues. That extra 20% of performance isn't worth it when you get it uh, to deal with that. So that is my opinion. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. At b and right now, they're doing 100 bucks off the base model, and that is such an excellent deal for a brand new MacBook Air with an excellent keyboard and all the other updates that they made. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max. If you guys wanna see more videos, you guys can click that circle above and check out my other MacBook Air videos right over there and I'll see you in the next video.